Hello, welcome to Learn and Flutter. And today I want to talk to you about the app bar widget. Now the reason why I have here scaffold colon app bar widget is because you'll be using the app bar widget with the scaffold widget. Now just to jog your memory, we sort of said that uh, the scaffold widget allows you to quickly lay out like a screen by giving you these three basic sections. In our last video, we saw how to use the scaffold widget to lay out a screen. Now, today I want to focus a little bit more on that widget that we placed on the top, which was the app bar widget. And so if we were to just um, take away everything else and ask ourselves, what would we get if we zoom in on that widget, we'll see that uh, we are able to place a title, which we saw before, because that's the only thing we have been able to use the app bar to do so far. But we also can put like, a button or some icon or a widget really we can just put a widget on the left side which is called the leading and then we can put um, some other buttons on the right side of our title which are called actions now don't worry that though one is called leading and the other ones are called actions you can put you can use buttons and make them do things okay so enough talking let's jump in take a look at the documentation and then get into the code so here we are in the app bar class. And let me just read it for you. It says an app bar consists of a toolbar and potentially other widgets, such as a tab bar and a flexible space bar. App bars typically expose one or more common actions with icon buttons, which are optionally followed by a pop-up menu button for less common operations such as being able to call out an overflow menu. App bars are typically used in the scaffold that app bar property, which is what we mentioned in the um, introduction, that uh, when you use an app bar, it's most likely gonna be as part of the scaffold um, widget. And so um, we've seen that uh, you can set the app bar class object on this scaffold app bar property, which places the app bar as a fixed height widget at the top of the screen. Before we continue, let's go start up our code and then come back. So this is Learning Flutter Section 5, Material Design. And we already have two parts already. So let's make a copy of our code and we'll call it um, copy of part 2. And so we'll call it part 3, Scaffold a Bar Widget. So we make a copy of that. And then if we cd into the part 3 directory, and so we'll start up Visual Studio Code here. All right, so now let's zoom in a bit. Clear this up, close that. So if we go into our code here, we'll see that oh, we have the scaffold widget with app bar. And our app bar, the only thing we set was our title and a background color. So let's run our code. And so while that's running, we'll go back and read the documentation. It tells you that if you want to use a scrollable app bar, you could use a sliver app bar, which we're not going to talk about today. Um, and when not used as scaffold at app bar or when wrapped in a hero widget, place the app bar in a media query so it can basically figure out um, thing about the device. But I'm more interested in this part. The app bar displayed a toolbar widgets, leading, title, and actions above the bottom, if any. And so you can see this is what this looks like. So our entire app bar really looks like this. It has a place for title, it has a place for the leading, and it has a place for those action. But additionally, it has a flexible space that you can also specify. And then this bottom widget. Now this bottom widget can be used as a tab bar. Um, this is like sort of put up those tab menus. So you can use a tab bar widget here, for example. But we're going to leave that for another video and simply try to use the scaffold widget and put some leading and some action and that's it. So here's our application with our title and no leading or no actions. So now that we have an idea of what are some of the other properties we can use, leading and actions, let's go through that. So if we come back over to our code and I will bring this down here a bit. Uh, maybe this is too big. Um, so here we go. Here's our title. And let's see which other properties we have. 
So if we open there, we see there's the action properties and it's a list of widgets. So since there's a list of widgets, we can give it any widget we want. So a simpler widget would be like a text widget, for example, where we say hello. Um, that's one possibility and save. But generally, and there it, go, it shows up there, but generally these are actions we want to perform. Remember we build out like a top menu. So typically you'll see people use the icon button widgets over here. So an icon button is basically a button made from an icon. We need to specify the icon that's going to be represented. And this property is of type icon. And it's also a widget. So we can say, I want to create an icon and I'm going to use the icons package to say, let's create an icon. I'm just like the first one there. And because this is a button, if you look now that we put our icon there, it looks disabled. So I cannot click on it. I'm trying to click. I don't know if you can hear that. I can't click on it. The reason that it looks disabled is because there's no action associated with it or anything that can take action. So if you hover over this and scroll down, uh, maybe it tells you. Uh, ta -ta -ta, it says require one of these, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so parameter missing on press is required. And so there we go. So we put an on press and we say this is our callback. Now our callback, it doesn't do anything or anonymous function, but at least it satisfy the fact that we specify a non null value for on press. And now you can see that our icon button um, is now enabled and we can click on it. You can see it because this is material. Well, it operates like a material. Like if I hold on on it, I don't know if you can see, it looks like something is radiating out from there. And we can have some fun with the icon button, like setting the background color that um, radiates out from there. Uh, let's see here. So if we do this and we say splash color. So colors that, let's do green, something that we can see very easily. Save that. And it's the splash color, right? So when I hit this button, see there's a splash, but look at this. If I hold it, you see the splash goes out very slowly. Of course, if I hit it really fast, um, yep. All right, so we have one icon button. Great, and that's gonna be our action. And of course, you know, you can put whatever code you want in here. But we can copy this and duplicate it or do it three times. And now we can say, for example, let's say instead of ac we can do place and let's do i don't know maybe what else is in here um alarm dot 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 time mm, box circle why not i don't know so you save that and then now you, you can see uh, we have a list of action buttons here and um that was pretty easy to put there now when I place the action button, you notice how my title move over to the left. And that might be desirable if this is what I, if I was going to stop here and that's all that I wanted. But maybe I still want my title to be in the center of the screen. So in that case, there's a center title property and I can see that that's true. And when I save, you can see now my title is back to the middle of the screen. Now, there was one other property that we mentioned that is also a widget, and that was deleting. So if I take out this, for example, I don't need this anyway. I say leading, and leading property for the action bar is a widget, so it can be anything. And so let's make it an icon button also. And we can say we have an icon, and we can say we have an icon, and the icon type, icons that let's call it menu and let's see if we were to do on press and then we do that and null so format this properly so you can see it and so this is our leader and so our leading and so notice how we have yet another button to help us with you know maybe open up a side navigation or doing something else right um but those are the ways in which you can use and populate the app bar. So that is pretty much it for this video. Again, I wanted to keep it simple and straightforward, but just to show you how 
the scaffolding widget and actually the whole material package give you so much to be able to use and create pages very quickly. But for now, keep playing around with this stuff. Um, just create application after application. And if all you do is create a scaffold and just play with some of the properties, that becomes like a muscle memory and you sort of kind of know and feel comfortable and get comfortable using it. If you like what you're seeing, please, please subscribe. Please hit the notification bell button. And of course, spread the word. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.